Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to the Vintage Quilt Block Series. This is, I believe, block number nine and the name of this one is called Turkey in the Straw. This is another large block. It's a 16 inch block and um, this one originally um, from the original pattern is made with diamonds here but you can see I switched that to a quarter square triangle and a flying geese unit so uh, it makes it a lot simpler and it goes together pretty quick and uh, I hope you'll join me and I'll show you how to make this block okay so here are the fabrics that you're going to need to make the turkey in the straw block for the A piece which is your center piece you're going to need one square that is six and a quarter inches for B, you're going to need four pieces that are three and three eighths by six and a quarter. C will be two pieces that are three and three quarters inch square, and then you're going to cut those on the diagonal. For piece D, you need eight two and a half inch squares. Piece E, you need four three and three eighths by six and a quarter rectangles. F is two four and seven eighths inch squares cut on the diagonal once. G is for two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles and H is for three inch squares cut on the diagonal times one. So first thing we're going to do is um, make our little units here. So we're going to make this unit here first and we're going to start out with making the flying geese part of it first. So we're going to need our G rectangles and our D squares. And on the back of these D squares, you're going to need to draw a diagonal line uh, with a pencil and a ruler, just one diagonal line, and we're going to stitch right on that line. So if you have a, a line marked on your machine with tape or if you have a seam guide a diagonal seam guide you don't need to draw this line and I've already got a piece of tape on my machine so I'm going to follow that instead of the line but I'm going to adjust the camera and we'll start making these flying geese units okay so I have all of my pieces here and I'm going to start out I'm going to chain piece all of these together and to do that I'm going to sew the squares on one side first. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to start in the center and go down to the lower left hand corner. And I'm following the line on my tape here. So I just get started right there at the corner. And I do have a 50 weight thread in here in the bobbin and the needle. And I'm going to lower my stitch length to 2.0. My machine automatically starts at 2.5. I aligned the point here right along the edge of this tape. cut these apart, trim my threads, and then I'm going to trim off this edge here. So I'm going to just use my scissors. You can trim it with your rotary cutter if you want to. Okay, I'm going to set those aside. And this is what I have. I'm going to go ahead and impress this up. So I'm going to press it towards the triangle. So all my pieces are pressed and now I'm going to sew the other square on and I'm going to place it on the opposite side, line up my raw edges and I'm going to sew from the center to the bottom right hand corner. Clip these apart. Trim my starting threads. And then trim off 
this triangle here. Okay, so now we have the flying geese unit. So I'm going to press these triangles open. Okay, so here's one all pressed, ready to go. So the next part that we have to work on is um, we can sew these triangles on or this one, whichever you, you like to do. But I'm going to go ahead and sew these two triangles on. And um, those are the H triangles. So I'm going to grab those. Okay, so what we want to do is to make a triangle. And so we're going to take these triangles here and they're going to go like this and then we're going to take the C triangles and they're going to go like that. So we're going to I'm just going to go ahead and stack all of these up together and I need three more on each side. It helps me if I can lay out the sections uh, before I sew them together. That way I'm not going to accidentally sew it like this. This isn't going to give me the diamond shape that I want. This is going to make the diamond. So um, we're going to use this layout and I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these uh, triangles onto this side and then I'll sew these onto that side and then I will sew on the larger triangle next. Okay, so I'm just going to line up my raw edges. So my piece is like this. I'm going to sew with this side up so that I don't accidentally flip this seam over. I want it to lay flat. And it's easier to start from a squared off edge than it is from a point down here. I'm just going to sew right off of that and then I'm going to grab my next two pieces, line them up and then sew them immediately following. I have all four pieces sewn and so I'm going to clip them apart and then I'm going to press so we have this so I'm going to press these away from the flying geese unit okay so now I'm going to add the other triangle and this time I'm going to have the triangle facing up because the seam is already going down here so we're going to sew from this side these apart okay so here is what this unit looks like now so the um, yellow triangle will go here so I'm going to go ahead and press these open and then we'll add that last triangle okay so now we have dog ears here and you can leave those or you can cut them off. I'm going to go ahead and cut them off. And um, add this triangle. Okay, I need this triangle to be centered here. So I already had the center point from the flying geese unit. So I'm going to fold this in half wrong sides together. And make pinch a little crease there and then line that up right with the point of the flying geese like that 
and then I can pin that in place and then I'm ready to sew. So I'm going to do that with all of these. I'm going to get rid of my dog ears. Okay, I want to see where the stitching lines cross. There's one going this way, one going this way, and that's where the point of the flying geese is. So if I stitch just to the uh, outside of that line where they cross, then I'll preserve the point. Okay, so here we have the completed unit and I'm going to press these triangles away from the flying geese. Okay, so now I have all the triangle units and I need to trim them down and what I'm going to follow is the quarter inch seam allowance and my 45 degree angle here. So I'm going to start with the sides first and they should be pretty close and I'm going to have this diagonal go right through the um, flying geese unit to the corner of the square here. And then the quarter inch mark is going right with that point there. And then we'll trim what is L on the outside which is just a little bit right here. So we'll trim that. I'm going to turn it around and do this side. So you don't have to have a special ruler to do this. You just need to um, have a 45 degree line on your ruler. So I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. So there we go. So all that is from the extra, from those triangles, those H triangles. And now I want to see what I've got here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up the, the quarter inch mark with the points on the flying geese. And then, um, I don't need to worry about a straight line there, but we'll, we look okay here. So it's not too long this way, it's just this edge that is too long. So the next thing I'm going to do is to sew the, e, the F triangles onto the B rectangles. So they're just going to go just one on top of the other. Let me get my clips out of the way. And so we're doing the same thing. We need to center these. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do my finger press mark on both pieces. Just like that. And open it up and put my triangle in along that crease. Just line them up and then I'm going to open it and then pin it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and pin both ends since this is a long piece. Pin it there and here. Then I'm going to sew all of these together.
so now I'm going to press these open and I'm going to press towards the white. Okay, now I'm going to sew an E rectangle to the B rectangle, just like that. So right sides together. And you can pin these if you want. Okay, so here is what the unit looks like. And now I'm going to press towards the green. That will create less bulk at the intersection here when I sew it to the triangle units. Okay, now I'm going to take an A square and I'm going to sew one of these units to one of the sides. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the dog ears here so I don't have to do that later. But we're going to meet the green edge to the A square. So we have this. So now I need to sew one to the opposite side. So I'm going to turn it around, right sides together, and then sew these. So now I have this and I'm going to go ahead and press um, towards the green again. Okay, so now I'm going to lay out the block. We've got this big long section here and it's going to go corner to corner. And we need to put in these. These and another triangle. So we need to get all our triangles in and our side units like this. So we've got this look here which just barely fits on my table here. So we need to sew these three sections together here and these three sections here. So I'm going to just lay them over and line them up. Um, what I need to watch is I have a point here from the flying geese unit and I have a seam right there so I want that seam of the fly or the point of the flying geese to meet up with that seam so I just have to fold the fabric back make sure I've got it in line and then push put it back and I'm going to place a pin and then this is ready to sew just need to line up the raw edges and I've got a dog ear here I want to trim off. So I'll just get my little scissors and trim that off. And I'm going to place a pin near the end and near the beginning. Like that. And then I need to do the same with this side. So this will just fold right over. Get this out of the way. Make sure everything lines up. with the point there. That looks pretty good. And place pins. Now my furnace is getting ready to kick on, so trim off that dog ear. So it's getting noisy in here, so I will Put on some music and uh, show how I'm sewing all this together.
Okay, so now I'm ready to press, and I'm going to press the seams towards the uh, rectangles and away from the triangles. And there we go. There's the first side. And then we'll do the second one. Okay, so those units are ready to be sewn to our long strip here. Now I have to turn the dog ears off of this side. Okay, so these units will go like this. Okay, I need to match up these seams here and I need to match up this point with this seam and the same on the other side. So I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to sew from this side. That's where the majority of the seams are. And I'm going to match these up like I did previously. I'm not matching up two points but I'm matching up a point to a seam. So I'm just going to line that up and just kind of peek in there make sure everything is lining up. Placing a pin and then these two seams need to nest and they're pressed in opposite directions so that should be pretty easy. But I'm going to go ahead and put a pin there and put a pin on this one. And then match this point up with this seam here. So now that's ready to sew. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that and then I will pin this triangle and sew that one. Okay, so here I'm watching where the two lines of stitching cross and do my best to sew in, on the seam side of that. what this looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to pin the other side on. Okay, do more pressing. So here is the completed block 
it's um, it came out really well so I'm real happy with that it looks just like the sample block so um, there's not many difference in there of course you can change these colors all around however you want to I'm not certain how this block got its name it's turkey in the straw and I don't know if the diamond pieces were supposed to be the turkey feathers or if they were supposed to be the hay I, I don't know I'm not sure what they were supposed to be but um, this is my version of turkey in the straw and with this version you don't have any diamonds you have to worry about so that's a, a bonus to that pattern so I uh, hope you'll give this one a try Well, that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is a really fun block. It goes together pretty easily and um, you know you can use um, a focus fabric in the center. You can make it with all kinds of fabrics. It doesn't have to be reproduction fabrics like I did here. So use some of your favorite fabrics and uh, make yourself a nice big block. It can be part of your quilt. It can be part of a table runner, part of a table topper, a tote bag. Uh, a pillow front, lots of things you can do with this block. So I hope you'll give it a try. So if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.